Hi everyone, welcome to my honey and oat hot processed soap video. I wanted to show you this um, re soap recipe to show how I make hot processed soap. It's a really good easy method of soap making, especially if you want to add hard oils, waxes and butters into your soap recipes. So I start off by making my lye solution, which is 135 grams of sodium hydroxide mixed into 250 grams of water. Um, I like to do this first, that way it's just done. It doesn't matter what temperature your lye solution is because everything's going to be hot with this method. Uh, just mix that until it's dissolved and put it somewhere safe. Then you need to get a crock pot or a slow cooker and add your oils to that. So I'm adding 600 grams of olive oil. 80 grams of castor oil. You can see that my crock pot's a bit stained because I have used it for cooking um, but I'm only using it for soap making these days. I'm also adding 100 grams of coconut oil. Make sure you get all of the oils out of your containers. 100 grams of almond oil. Now I'm adding 100 grams of cocoa butter which is one of my latest favorite ingredients. Um, I have played around with this in um, cold processed soap recipes but it's a bit harder to work with. And finally 20 grams of beeswax. You'll see that my beeswax is quite dark brown color. It's a very natural raw beeswax that I got from a honey seller in a local market. It does make this, um, this these oils quite dark so I do add a little bit of coloring later on so basically just mix those turn your crock pot on high and and I'm especially using high you don't have to use high heat you can use low but I wanted to um, get those waxes and things melted as quickly as possible so just um, let it sit for a while it took about half an hour in total I just keep coming back every now and then to give it a stir you can see now that it's just the beeswax left that is undissolved and here it is with everybody everything's finally melted so you can see there it is quite a dark oil mixture so I'm going to add some colorings to this soap just to lighten it up a bit I'm just using um, some kale and clay which is a lovely natural white clay ingredient and titanium dioxide which is another um, natural colorant to make your soaps whiter if you want to. These won't make my soap white, uh, they'll just make it a little bit lighter. So I'm just mixing those in with my stick blender just to make sure that they're all thoroughly incorporated into the oil. And then when you're ready you can pour your lye solution into the hot oils and we can start making the soap. So make sure you've got your safety gear on. I'm wearing gloves, glasses, um, and I was wearing a mask when I mixed my lye solution before as well. So safety is always really important with soap making. So pour your lye solution in and give it a stir and start blending. At this point, the, the, the method is very similar to cold processed soap making. Um, you'll start to see the differences soon though. Um, because there's beeswax and cocoa butter in this recipe, this soap comes to trace really, really quickly, which is really quite normal, especially when there are, are waxes in your recipe. Uh, there's only a small amount of beeswax in this recipe, only 2%, but it is enough to really speed up that trace. You see that's got become a really thick batter really quickly. I keep I kept stick blending that way beyond what I needed to. As long as you reach a trace, that's all you need to do. I just kept doing it just for fun. Um, it did get really, really thick. I kind of wanted to see how thick it would get with me blending it. This is the first time I've tried this recipe. So clean off your stick blender as best as you can. Um, I like to give mine a bit of a buzz in some water just to clean the soap out of the inside of the end part. And then cover the pot. And this is where we start to leave it for the soap to cook. So now we start a process of just checking it and stirring it every now and then. This is after about 15-20 minutes of cooking. You can see the edges are getting a little bit fluffy. Uh, the middle has gone really hard like it's set up almost like a cold process soap would. Um, you don't have to do all this mixing that I do here. I'm just doing this because I can't help myself. I tend to 
mix <laughs> mix everything just for fun. Um, I just always want to know what's happening with it. I like checking on things and giving them a stir. But you don't have to mix this. There are hot process soap makers who uh, cover their soap and just leave it on low for a whole hour without touching it at all. Um, so here I am after another 15 minutes or so and you can see it's really frothed up now. This is what they call the mashed potato stage. So it's really frothy. I can actually stir it now. It's well and truly started to cook. Um, it's the soap is starting to saponify and go through its different stages. Um, so just give it a stir and um, put the lid back on and just keep leaving it and stirring it and checking it every now and then. Here I am giving it another little check and another little stir. It's still nice and fluid. It's starting to lose its fluffiness and move into the next stage. Um, it's got a little bit to go though. And here it is after another 15 minutes or so. Uh, it's probably took about an hour all up. Uh, so this is what they call the Vaseline stage. The soap has lost its fluffiness. It's definitely not fluffy like it was before and it's a bit hard to describe but it's definitely past that mashed potato stage. And at this point your soap is normally cooked by now. So I'm using my uh, pH test strips. These are just cheap little ones I bought off eBay but I've been using them for years and they work pretty well. Well enough for soap testing anyway. I just dip my finger into a bit of water, touch that on the soap and then touch the strip onto that wet soap and it gives me a good indication straight away. Um, so I can see that my strip is green which means it's about between 8 and 9 on the pH scale which is perfect, that's exactly where it should be. So the soap is fully cooked now, it's fully saponified. Now I'm just adding some oat flour. Um, this is just some oat flour that I ground up in my meal. I use this for my bread making and also for my breakfast so I had it on hand. I thought that would add to the nice oatiness of the soap. It just adds a little bit of texture to it as well and a bit of, bit of interest. Uh, mix that in really well. You can see the soap is starting to get thicker again now. So at this point I'm getting everything in. So uh, mixing in a tablespoon of honey and a tablespoon of water. You don't have to add any of these ingredients. You could put this soap in the mould as it was but I'm adding the honey. Because it is a honey soap I wanted to add some honey. Um, mix that through. Adding in some liquid ingredients at this stage can actually really help with hot process soap. Because it does thicken up and it gets quite stiff um, mixing in a little bit of added liquid at the end can just help loosen it up a bit which makes it a bit easier to get into the mould. Some people start with a lot more water to begin with um, but I like to reduce the water but ha add a little bit at the end. This is my fragrance oil. This is just some honey and lemon fragrance oil that I had. I don't normally use fragrance oils in my soap but um, this is an old one that I wanted to use up so I thought I'd give it a try. Uh, it turned out really quite lovely, just 20 grams of that, which is reasonably low amount. I find fragrance oils a bit too overpowering if I put too much in. So mix that through really, really well. It's looking good. And now I get my mould, which I prepared before, um, and I start to fill up the mould. The trick with moulding hot process soap is to bang it down all the time. You'll watch me doing this, I'm just constantly tapping it down. It's really important to do that otherwise you'll get air bubbles and you won't get a nice even texture in the final soap. Um, so just scoop it in, just glop it in, it's, it's a really different <laughs> method to cold process soap making. but. Um, if you tap it down like that you'll get a really nice smooth bar of soap in the end. I just sped this up because it's a bit tedious. The other thing I should say too is don't bother about getting the final scrapings out of your crock pot. Get as much of the hot soft soap out as you can but you'll have all these dry crusty bits around the edges. Don't try and add them onto the top of your soap because they won't mix on very well, they won't stick very well. You can get them out later, just scrape a knife around and then just make a little ball of soap into your hands out of those little bits. But um, don't try and 
mix them in. They just don't stick once they're getting dry. Uh, so I just leave that for now and just get the rest of that out later. So tap it down. Look, I'm not a, an expert in hot process soap making. I'm not really experienced with it. I have made a fair bit over the years, but not a lot. I tend to prefer or do cold, cold process soap making more regularly. Um, so I don't know what all the tricks are for making the tops beautiful. They do tend to not look as nice as cold process soap tops do. Um, but today I just got a fork out and sprayed the top with a bit of water so the fork wouldn't stick. And I'm just texturing it a little bit um, just to give it a bit of texture and not make it look sort of so globby uh, for want of a better word. <laughs> And now I'm just sprinkling some of more of the oats on the top. These are just ground oats, like oat flour. But if you don't have ground oats, you can get rolled oats and just chop them up. And there it is. There's the final soap. It's a really lovely soap. It's got a beautiful lather. Um, leave it at this point for about 6 to 12 hours, or just enough till it's cooled and hard enough to cut. This is the same day as when I made the soap, just later on in the afternoon. It's still a little bit warm in the middle, but it's well and truly hard enough for me to cut. Uh, it's probably only about four hours after I made it, but um, it was a reasonably cool-ish day for where I live. Um, so it, it cooled off okay. You don't have to wrap up your soaps either with hot process because they don't go through any gel phase or anything like that. They've already gelled. They're completely cooked. Um, having said that though, they still do benefit from a probably about three to four weeks drying time just to make them nice and hard. But that depends on how much water you added to it as well. It's a really lovely really lovely batch of soap, this one. I'm kind of inspired to make more hot process soaps and do a bit more research and learn some more tricks on how to make them look a bit nicer and do colours and things like that. But this is a really good introductory method. You can use any recipe with this. You don't have to follow my recipe. This I, I'll give you the recipe in the description box, but this is just a bit of a guide to show you how you do it. But you can use any recipe with this. Thanks for watching everyone. Hope you enjoyed the video. See you next time.